Welcome, everybody, to The Advisor with Stacey Chilemi. And today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. She is part of our podcast community. She has her own podcast on our show. And she is a wonderful business consultant and coach. And she teaches people how to help establish connection within the business and help the business to grow. And today she likes to talk about uh, core values and how important that plays in the role of businesses and corporations and, you know, how it really can make a team evolve, become stronger and get to the next level. Brenda, it's so, I love having you on the show. It's so exciting when you come on and I yeah. love the idea of talking about core values because I think it's so important. It's talked about here and there, but it's not talked about enough. Now, can you talk Tell us why it's so important to have core values within a business or within any type of business institution. Yeah, you know, core values, that's the anchor to alignment in everything. Because if you look at it this way, <clears throat> if we do not come from the same point of view, mindset, foundation, nothing is ever going to be cohesive. It's always going to be a battle. It's always going to be a fight. And if anybody has ever walked into a team and every day, it just seems like it's always a battle. It's because yeah. we're not all on the same page. And, and there's levels to this. There's my director of security again, as usual. <laughs> then there's levels to this. You know, it, it, the same core values in a business ultimately pulling the right people in <clears throat> should have similar core values in their real life, in their personal mm -hmm. life. All right. That's a, that's a fundamental foundation right there. Yes. <clears throat> and you don't have to see how that is impacting first off in the macro level, our country. If you take a look at what's going on in our country, we've been yeah. horribly divided now for a while and I'm not going to go down the political road but I am going to look at it from a cultural standpoint. And here in the United States, we also have a lot of subcultures. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we also have the individual. So we're looking at it from the micro, <clears throat> the macro, the micro, and the individual. So the yes. macro is as a country. Yes. The micro is within an organization or home. Right. And then the individual is clearly, obviously, the individual, right? So we've got what's going on in the country. We've got what the standards are set for each individual, either business or home. And mm -hmm. then we have what's dealing with somebody's worldview. <laughs> and worldview is a whole different thing. And we get our cultures and our value and our values from the micro. Mm -hmm. And that's what helps create the individual and that's where we get our core that's where we get our worldview from and so for people who don't know when i'm referring to worldview worldview is actually something that happens very very early on in life and it, and it's formed throughout our entire lives and it shifts like yes. anybody can make a shift and a change right but your worldview of how you got to where you are now starts off young because your biggest influences are going to be your parents, your siblings, and the remainder of your family or whatever community you had growing up as a kid. Then right. as you progress, you go into school, your worldview starts to expand when you are now exposed to more people of authority. And we're looking at, you know, your teachers, you're looking at your physicians, you're looking at law enforcement, firemen, right? Those are all people of authority that, at you know, He's, uh, priests, pastors, ministers, whatever, right, in church. And then as we grow up, we have all of those le new levels of authority that are really entering our life at a mass scale, and they're influencing that. Then we have our unique and individual encounters with people. And then we have all of the, the media, the data, the messaging that's coming in from the community, the yeah. state, the country, the world, social media interests right <clears throat> so it's very fair to say that we look at culture through a filter right mm -hmm. it's like taking a lemon and putting on a pair of blue glasses and i think i may have mentioned this in the last pod i'm gonna do it again because it's so good but when we look at the lemon with that filter on what color is the lemon a lot of people say it's green right when in yeah. fact the lemon is still yellow 
Right. So it's very fair to say that somebody who grew up in New York City had a very different, has a very different worldview of the world based off of their life experiences as opposed to somebody who grew up in, let's say, Tucson, Arizona. Right. Right. <clears throat> so we have all these subcultures within our own primary culture of the United States. So that's a lot of stuff, which is all great, but it also separates us too. Yes. So what pulls us together is actually these core values. And if we don't have them, <clears throat> you're just going to have a bunch of separate people all trying to figure out how to work together. <clears throat> and so that's why, you know, a lot of companies, when they have people issues, they mm -hmm. have people issues because they're dealing mostly with worldview type people issues. And that's why when I teach a, I teach a class and it's called um, <clears throat> how to deal with our employees who love to argue and debate everything. The biggest section that we spend time on is actually this worldview challenge. Yeah. And <clears throat> what happens is that people are unwilling to drop what they know to open up their mind for the vast, for the most part on certain things. Cause if it negatively impacts them in their world, Mm -hmm. then, you know, they're going to flare up <clears throat> for the most part, or they're going to go extremely silent and totally disconnect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at worldview, if you look at core values, there's a lot of different ways to approach it. So you can have single word core values. And, but what really, truly successful entrepreneurs are finding <clears throat> is that when they have it actually kind of spelled out, written out, I yeah. have a couple examples for you, actually. Let me grab my filing system. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have like projects all over the place for this month. I don't. That's all right. I can memorize it. Um, okay. This is my favorite ones anyway. So I have a friend of mine who has a cleaning business. I'll give you some examples here. First off, He's, his core values are very simple, and I and I love how he did this. So it's a cleaning business. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the first core value is that you have to have fun. All right, it has to be in a has to be. Oh, he's got a lot to say today. It's got to be an enlightening environment. So he wants people to have fun. If there's a problem, the second core value is you talk about it. If something's bugging you, if there's an issue, if you have a question, anything. You talk about it, right? Right. Which also means that you have to talk about it to the right people as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, venting your frustration off to a coworker who has zero capability of solving the problem is not what he's talking about. What he's talking about is come to him, talk to the managers, go to the leaders, right? Have those yeah. important conversations. Because if you don't have it, the onus will be on you. And that's also an expectation that he sets. And yes. he doesn't tolerate people for very long who don't align with the core values. And he's absolutely right because he's got a massively successful business. One of that, one of the massive reasons because of this, right? <clears throat> one of his other, his other core values is that we work as a team right. and they have that clearly defined. Now, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't remember if we talked about this the last time, but here's the thing. If you don't have, if you're using teamwork right that robot thing mm -hmm. if you don't have to clearly define what exactly being a team is things are going to struggle so if i were to ask you what is the when you think of the word teamwork or working together as a team what is the number one thing that is most important to you as working in a team having everybody in alignment with each other being able to be on the same track Okay, so alignment is for you, minus competency. So mm -hmm. you can see that we are not living the same definition of teamwork. Right. Mm -hmm. Because what's important to you is not as important to me because I have my number one thing. So companies, they talk teamwork, 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 and people get confused as to like, well, I am working as a team. Well, you may be from your perspective, but unless the company actually helps people understand what that word means and right. what the definition behind it, everybody's going to have their unique version of it. So that mm -hmm. falls apart, right? And then the last thing, this is the, I love this one. <clears throat> this is my favorite. Is Out of all of the core values I have ever heard in my life, I think this is the funniest one and it is just absolutely awesome. And it is make mama proud. 
<laughs> I think it's great, right? Make mom proud. So these are easy. So make mama proud is when when the wife comes home or the woman of the house comes home and she sees after you know dealing with whatever she's dealing throughout the day, they get she gets to come home and she walks into this amazingly clean home of which she mm-hmm. didn't have to lift a finger to actually do. So that's make mama proud. In other words, do the do the right thing, do the best job, make mama proud, right? And I love it. I absolutely love it. Some of the other really amazing core values that I've heard, um, one of them comes from, uh, actually, I adopted this one in um, a group. So I have, believe it or not, I like all the things that I get involved in. I do have a marketing group <clears throat> that I help new coaches, new entrepreneurs, um, new speakers, anybody who's just stepping their foot into the world of entrepreneurism. Um, I actually help them through this because what I know is that they're about ready to like get, they're going to be shocked as to, they think the world is one thing, but then as they get into entrepreneurship, like there's so many things that are going to go weird for them. So we help them out. Right. And we also help them actually fully utilize AR marketing, AI marketing as well, which is really great. So our core values for this group is never compare you behind the scenes to somebody else's highlight reel. Right. And the reason why I put this one in place is because everybody's journey is unique. And what you see is somebody else's success story is really just that's their highlight reel. So it's the limited amount of vision you have looking into their world, but it's not the full picture. Right. Yes. So that means that as a group, the culture that I'm setting is that we we believe in embracing our own path, knowing yes. that our progress is going to happen behind the scenes. And in this community, we lift each other up and know <clears throat> that focus on our own growth and we do it with compassion. So that is an example of being able to articulate clearly what you expect people, how you expect to engage and interact. It actually lays out a format for the dynamic of your group as well. Right. It also reminds you, and, and, and I chose this one specifically, is because when you're first getting started, you're you're looking at what's working for other people. And the natural thing to do is to start comparing yourself that I'm not at that level. Yeah. I like mine don't my videos don't even look remotely as good as that, right? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, cut yourself some break. You're just starting out, right? You may right. not have the budget. You may not. And just even that, it's like, no, I don't have the budget. I don't, you know what I mean? It's like, stop, <clears throat> stop, stop, stop. So our yeah. second core value is this, success rewards speed. The faster you take action, the quicker you see results. Yes. We prioritize swift decision, uh, decisive moves to actually keep our momentum strong. Because here's the thing. When you're constantly in action, you you have no time for the stu- the chatter that goes on in your head. You really don't because <clears throat> you're too dang busy, right? Yes. So in our community, as being the leader, I set this one in place because we actually encourage people to implement what they learn immediately because mm-hmm. success does not wait for perfection, right? It yeah. only rewards those who take action. Mm-hmm. Here's another example. This one came. I adopted this one. I kind of changed the words up just a little bit, but this one came from a mastermind that I was part of. I kind of still am um, for the last several years. And it's represent what winning looks like and everything that you do. Mm -hmm. Winning isn't just about an end goal. It's about how you show up every single day from the way you handle your challenges to how you present yourself. We believe that if you embody the mindset and behaviors of a champion, you're going to win. And that means right. consistently acting with integrity, with confidence, and focus on a growth. Yes. And the last core value that I instilled in this group <clears throat> is never let good be the robber of great. And this one comes, believe it or not, from my pastor down in Texas. Good mm-hmm. is very comfortable, but greatness is where true impact lies. And in this, in our community for this group, we don't settle for just good enough. Whether you're creating content or building your brand or leading others, People have the power to push past the comfort zone and actually strive for greatness. 
Yeah. We aim to think bigger and empower one another to turn our good efforts into extraordinary outcomes because greatness is what leaves a lasting legacy. Yeah. So those are, you know, those aren't my normal core values. That's a very specific set of core values for the participants of this group <clears throat> as it continues to grow, which it is, which is great. Eventually, we're going to wind up having staffing. Well, listen, if they don't, when they come in and they don't align with that, yeah. they're they're going to beat down the culture of the group. People are going to leave, right? Yeah. And that affects revenue. Mm -hmm. It's just no good. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. It really looks like we really, you know, when it comes to business, it's really important to have those those meetings, to have to really establish your core values, ex explain to people what this company is about. This is what our expectations are. This is what is most important to us. This is what we see as successful in our in our company. This is what works for us. And really, you know, giving people a foundation or a strategy to go by. Because when you leave people, like you said, and, and, and uh, you know, all by themselves to figure it out, which, you know, I've seen many companies do it, you know, it, it just doesn't work because everybody's mind works differently. We're all wound up differently and our core values, mm -hmm. you know, if we're not structured, our core values are going to be all over the place because everyone's going to have a different version of their core values. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the thing is, is that a lot of companies will assume core values are your mission, vision and value. And then they you know, not every company does this. People will, will, you know, companies will create that. Some companies stick them on the wall and they're just, a, they're just artwork. And then there yeah. are other companies that really live to it. And that's, that's yeah. the difference. The big question is, is if you are the leader in a business, if you own a business, the question is, where are you in that journey? Is it just work that adorns your wall or are, is it like everybody embraces it <clears throat> or yeah. is it somewhere in between and at what level? Right. And more than likely, if it's somewhere in the between, you're going to have levels of like, well, we could do better with it. Yeah. I learned how to do all of this years ago when I worked at CarMax. And CarMax, mm -hmm. at the time, I, I I don't know, I would assume that they're the same way, but um, man, I used to have so many leaders constantly refer back to very specific core values. And mm -hmm. You know, even though this one is more of an objective, but I have a my favorite boss of all time that I ever worked with. I still talk to him. It creeps him out every time I talk about him, um, <laughs> write about him. <laughs> he's, in, he's like literally in every book I've ever written. But um, and it just, it weirds him out. He's so funny about it. But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the man has like no digital footprint, so I can see how it would weird him out. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so people would go to Tom and, and they say, you know, Tom, I have an, an idea <clears throat> that I think, yeah. you know, will make something better. And Tom would always, if it was like their first time coming up or if they didn't finish the sentence the way he wanted, which I'll, I'll get to in a second, he would always say, is this going to help us sell more cars before right. he even heard it? Yeah. And they would go, no. And he said, if it doesn't help us sell or service more cars, it's not the right thing to pursue. Right. And nine times out of 10, it was because somebody wanted to make their job less burdensome, right? Mm. It was part of the process, but he's absolutely right. Because that's how companies get over-processed. Yeah. Right. Is listening to things and improving things that don't help you meet your company's core objective, right? 100%. So he would, what would happen is that over time, enough people caught under this understanding they would come back and they say, hey, Tom, <clears throat> I have an idea and I think it's going to help us sell more cars. He goes, great, I'm all yours, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then he would ask the, and then he would ask other like questions that would blow your mind. The man was just a freaking genius when it came to this stuff. But uh, one of the things that we always challenged ourselves with, and this is where I got my, this is where I put my company core values into place. And that is integrity, communication, collaboration, and honor. Yeah. I always ask, he would always ask the question, is this the right, what is the right thing to do? Right. From an ethical and a, and a, and a strong standpoint of integrity. And in other words, are we honoring the customer? Are we doing right by the customer? Mm -hmm. Even if the customer was a raging tyrant, 
is this the right thing to do? How have we managed this in the past? Like he would, we would actually go back and look at those things. Right. And inevitably what happened is that in doing so, it made us as, as leaders within the company, as influencers within the business, as just flat out employees, it made us better decision makers. Yeah. And we started talking about the right things and the more important things rather than the petty crap. Yes. And it was so amazing to be in that environment. And and ultimately, at the end of the day, what had happened is that we actually got extremely good at problem solving, decision making, and literally moving the company past. We were setting records in the business, number of cars sold in a day. Like we were breaking those records because we were so dialed in. Yeah. And that's what this does for people. So everybody leads to it. Everybody talks around it. <clears throat> Managers mm-hmm. have to reinforce it. But it is one of the most powerful experiences that I've ever had in business. Wow. Yeah. I think that's so true. It, and you really have, you know, you could easily get distracted and start focusing on so many different aspects of the business, you know, but at the end of the day, is it bringing you sales? Is it growing your business? You know, and if it's not, then you need to put it aside and, you know, this could be your little interest or hobby for another day. But if it's not increasing your sales, you really need to like, you know, put it aside because it's useless. You know, it may, you know, make things look prettier. It may, you know, it may be eye catching, you know, maybe people work on, you know, their websites and they spend all this time on their website, but the website is not selling anything. It's the person and the product that's selling, you know, so it's really, it's really focusing on, what is really bringing in the sales? Where is the traffic coming from? You know, where, you know, and these are the things that people have to really, um, uh, really focus on. And also like when you have core values, you know, people have to have trust and integrity, you know, you know, I think that's something that really needs to be emphasized too within a company that's kind of related to the core values, because when you have core values, you know, these are the core values of the company, but how are you going to be an example and really, you know, represent those core values? Absolutely. We got so into this that as a corporation, um, this was at the beginning of the the era when companies were like, people would call them personality profiles. Like you get in, you take a test or something. We actually created, and believe it or not, I studied under the, the, he was an industrial organizational psychologist and I studied under him in college. Didn't even know it was him until like halfway through the semester. And he told me, he says, yeah, he says, I was the one that actually created that assessment and I did the validation for it. And the validation is put in place to make sure that there's no unintentional discrimination. And I was like, wow, really? He says, I've been using that for years. And so we actually can't, we had this assessment and it was a values-based assessment. Everybody had to take it. And so at the end of the day, you had a stoplight report for for it. And then, you know, if we saw somebody that was, you know, kind of on the fence, we never fully turned away. We would still interview them. We'd still ask the questions. We would still get a sense of who this person was, right? Because these types of assessments can be perceived differently, you know, different laws. You know, like we had questions in there about if you caught, if you saw somebody that was smoking marijuana and, you know, in today's world, that's like, Like, can you even make that an issue? You know what I mean? That's Mm -hmm. what I mean by based around laws. So, you know, the the norms of the culture across the country have shifted. Yeah. So, but it was it was completely amazing. And then the other thing that we got really good at is that, especially for this, when we were interviewing people for sales, we would do that whole goofy, you know, sell me this pen, right? But here's the thing: we didn't use it because we wanted to see how good you can sell. We used it as an example. And as a test, as a little kind of on the spot test to see how trainable you were. Yeah. So what we would do is we would say, sell us this pen. And if they did like a knockout job, it's like, okay, great. Now sell me this pen if it's a different color and it comes in multiple, right? So we wanted to see what they would do. And if some, and we would always give them feedback and it's like, okay, now try it this way. And if they absorbed it and if Mm -hmm. they put it to use, they were very trainable. If they didn't and they missed the mark, this may not be the this may not be the direction. And our retention was insane doing yeah. that kind of thing. So, you know, it goes 
It goes beyond. <laughs> I'm so glad this is not live. He is just full of it. There's all sorts of construction and everything going on. I didn't know about. Um, the the most the awesome piece about all of this is that anybody can start doing it today. Mm -hmm. Right. It may take a good six months to a year to get everybody on board because you're right. you're going to go through a shift. I mean, you're going to you're going to launch some change. And we know what happens when people experience the change. They go, ew, you know, because you're disrupting somebody's mastery. But, you know, literally within a year, if you commit to that, you can shift the whole business. Yeah, you can. And if you do it with the intention that it's only going to improve things and include, include improve revenue gain and, and profit margins and reduce waste, it's like you won't even recognize your business right? in a good way. And that's that ultimately at the end of the day, that's, that's what we want. But you have to do the hard work, for, which means that you also have to do this yourself. You have to yeah. be the shining example. You yeah. have to, you have to hold to those and there's, you also need somebody to hold you accountable to it too, because you're going to be going through your change as a leader. And if yeah. you don't have that, you're going to wind up straying, or you may not necessarily be as effective as you want. Right. But it's 100% no. doable. That's so true. You know, and it, I don't think not everybody realizes how important it is to install those core values in everyone. You know, they just, you know, I think a lot of problem is, is that they assume that their employees are, you know, should know it just by being there and seeing how everything is run, that they should have a great idea of what the core values are. And then when they see people not really working together in the so-called alignment where someone is, you know, being not as serious. Another person is, you know, feeling overworked because they're trying to get, you know, their stuff done. And then, you know, one person may not be the greatest team player. They may be the negative one of the bunch kind of spreading out, you know. And so everybody is kind of like zigzagged, you know. What would be the best suggestions that you would you know, say if people want to really, you know, grind the core values into their employees and get everybody really on one, you know, focus you know um alignment you know having them to their full capacity being able to really you know function at their best you know how do you take some a, a company or a business that it doesn't have their core values set straight and how do you get them to that point yeah that's a really good question it starts with holding account it, it starts with mentoring one mm -hmm. level down holding one level down teaching one level down, right? So if right. you are the CEO, your C-suite has to be completely on board with this first and foremost. And they should be they should be really brought in and part of pulling all this together because those are the people that you're going to need the most buy-in with. Yes. Because if they're if your C-suite is here's the thing, if your C-suite is not on board mm -hmm. and your managers are not on board, you're only a figurehead on this. Nobody's going to take you seriously and you could be the top top tier of the company yeah. so if you all are coming from different positions and you're not unified on this and you're not executing consistently with the same amount of level of energy and focus it's not going to change to the level that you want it to you right. might barely move the needle right yeah. or you may not leave you or it just might fail all, all together so you have to start at the top <clears throat> the c-suite is 100 percent responsible for the rest of the culture the, the ceo is the one that sets the pace Right. Yes. So pull mm -hmm. them in, have them be part of that process. Then right. the second thing is that they have to hold their lieutenants accountable. They have to now teach these things. And if they don't have people who are willing to get on board, you guys have to make a decision as to whether or not this is the right move. Do we keep these people because it's going to damage the culture, even though it may cost us money to eliminate them? Yeah. If they're not willing to jump on board and do what do what is necessary. <clears throat> Or are you going to replace them with somebody who's equally talented and willing? Right. So you can have talent and unwilling, or you can have equally talented and very willing. Right. That's going to change your company, right? And yeah. then their sergeants, the people that report to them, they have to do the same thing as the C-suites are doing to your lieutenants, right? So right. now you've got, now you're starting to get accountability Mm -hmm. going right on through the system right? right so 
And then ultimately, at the end of the day, what's going to happen is that you're going to have all of your frontline employees falling in place. And mm-hmm. some people are going to leave. You're going to have turnover. Don't get all too wrapped up on that. I mean, yeah, turnover does have a cost to it, but imagine what you're going to be getting out in the long run rather than sacrificing in the short term. Right. And I think that's a very good point because a lot of times, you know, people, not everyone's going to want to be on board, you know, they're, you know, they're going to get overwhelmed or they're just, you know, they, they don't see it's worth it in their eyes. Well, if they don't see it's worth it, then, then you don't want them there because you want people that are going to be there, you know, and, and put 300% in. I always say, if you, you know, it's, it's, you know, you always should try to go over and beyond if you really care, you know, if you really want to stand out, if you really want to do well, and that helps the company as well. And they respect you and, and they notice that too. And and if, if someone's not willing to do that, then they shouldn't be there because it's just going to pull the company and, and it's going to pull the business down little by little by little. Because, it, you know, it, I think the negativity or the lack of interest in an employee really rubs off, you know, and it really it kind of it's kind of like when you're around somebody who's negative all the time, you kind of feel like they're sucking the energy out of you like a vacuum, yes. you know, just by being around them. Well, that, I think the same thing happens in the workforce. You know, if you're around positive people that all have the same core values and they're all you know geared towards the same goals you know company will definitely be strong and grow but you know it it doesn't you know even though it might cost the company money and they might have to retrain some of their employees it in in the long run i think it would probably be better off as well i agree with you yeah and you know i will tell you from experience that there's nothing worse than being a person who's bought in and being stuck in the middle of gripey employees and a gripey manager yeah you know that is i mean you're working hard to make the right kind of changes happen based off of you know the objectives that the company is set but if your own boss is not willing to if your boss is part of the problem and not part of that solution yeah. you can't positively influence everything else that you know you've got the ability to, or you know that you can, because he's eroding or she, right, is eroding everything that you're doing. Mm -hmm. But yet he tries to hold you accountable for the very thing that he's messing up. That's a a really good example of what can happen. You know, I found myself that in that situation a couple times in my career. Right. And it's exhausting. I mean, imagine two years of constantly battling to make the right kind of change happen for the betterment mm-hmm. of everybody. Yeah. When he wasn't around, it was a great day in the store. Right. Not because he wasn't there, but because we weren't faced with all of the issues, the insecurity and the short temperedness and the lack yeah. of understanding and the lack of will and, and the desire to always be right. I mean, that's, I wouldn't say it's toxic. It wasn't to that level, but it was annoying. So, <laughs> Yeah. But when he wasn't around, we always had a good day. You know, people, right. I would do the exact same thing every day. Walk around, say hi to everybody, check in on them, see how they're doing. What do they need? Blah, blah, blah. Hey, I got a question. Sure. You know, here's the answer. Go out and get it. <clears throat> if you have any, if you have any problems, do this exact same thing. And the temperament of the store was so vastly different. The days mm-hmm. when I was there, when he wasn't, and it was just me. Right. I think it makes a huge difference. I think a lot of times I, I've been in situations where I've, I've seen the, the director or the person or the ma- manager or the person in charge or the boss walk in and then the whole demeanor of the entire. Um, cold. Yes. And it's just you could see the stress and then all of a sudden they yeah. stiffen up. You could see the employees start to stiffen up. And that it shouldn't be like that because they know how that person is. They know what the expectations of that person is. And, and, and it puts immediate stress on them because there's no flexibility. There's no communication. There's no ability to like, you know, it's just what that person wants and that's it. And not looking at, you know, at the whole team and saying, okay, these are my core values. The, you know, this, this is, you know, I want, this is the way we should be doing things. If there's a problem, you know, you know, this is how we should, you know, uh, you know, go about, you know, solving the problem so it gets done in a, in a, in a, you know, productive way. And, you know, the structure isn't there, you know, I, yeah. I think that's really hard. So here's, here's something else. And I'll, I'll continue on with the example of this person. Now, this person actually about three years. So 
I was in, we worked together for two years and then I was transferred to a top performing team. I was apparently always the plan. And mm -hmm. he, he stayed where he was for a following year. Then he got demoted and he oh, willingly wow. accepted a step down, mm -hmm, went into another location and he knew he was a problem. But when I was working with him, if he wasn't there, and I'm talking about like within the same day, yeah, things happened. He was adamant that I would contact him and talk to him about what was going on. Like I couldn't, the company and him made it, put me in a position where I couldn't make a decision. And the days that I actually did made a, make a decision were yeah. the ones where I was just like, all right, I'm, I'm making the right call. And, you know, we'll deal with, we'll deal, you know, I'm not going to worry. I'll ask for forgiveness later. Right. I'm just not, <laughs> not worrying about it. Right. So exactly. it's like, I know what the right thing to do is, but you know, yeah, when you have multiple layers of approval like that. It's not cool. So yeah. every day, and here's what happened. It was like, it turned out every shift I wound up having to call and his kids got fed up with it. His wife hated it. And yeah. he was getting frustrated. And I'm like, listen, if you don't want me to call you all the time, then you just got to let me do my damn job. Yeah. And and he just wouldn't let that go. So, you know what? That impacts your personal dynamics as well. It impacts your family yeah. life. It does. It does. So think about that. I mean, it just goes beyond the walls of work. Right. And I've seen that happen also, too. It's just like you are with these people. They have, you know, a certain position and the phone is constantly ringing. And, and you know, lots of times I would sit there and I'm like, why can't these people just do their job? They should know how to do it. They've been with the company for X amount of years. Why do they have to keep running and calling? You know, and it's because the the the, the main person doesn't teach them what they need to know and doesn't teach them how to, or doesn't give them the ability to make those choices on yeah. their own. And I think yeah. that's a big factor. Yeah. It's alignment and trust. And it was funny because yeah. my very first night working, this was years ago, back in, in retail in big box retail, my very first night <clears throat> on my own, after my initial training as an ops manager, we had a gas leak and I, I'm like, I can smell gas. I know I can smell oh, wow. gas. And some and I'm like, come on. And and some people, I think I might smell it. I don't know. And I'm like, that's not sewage. That's like natural gas. So I quickly looked up what is the what is the process? It wasn't bad. And yeah. so I called facilities and I said, listen, I think we got a gas leak here. What, you know, what's the what's the step? Well, you need to call your store manager. Okay. Try calling, no answer. Try call the the DM, the district manager, who was a very good friend of mine. No response. I'm like, all right, I'm doing this. I'm making a call. I, I I had everybody come out. I had the fire department come out, check it. Sure enough, they're like, we we can't find anything. We can smell it with you, but we don't know where it is. So facility sent out an HVAC person, and I just happened to be open the very next morning. And sure enough, they found it. And, um, I couldn't get a hold of anybody. I couldn't, I couldn't follow the process. You yeah. Know? And so I got, I got phone calls coming in left and right. And they're like, what happened? What happened? They're like, did we lose any animals? Or were you like, no, everything's fine. Everything's, everything's good. I said, we did find it. The HVAC tech found it on the bubble test. So you could see, you know, the yeah. coming on the outside of it. And so we had a legitimate leak and good thing that we caught it. Cause it was getting bad apparently. Wow. And so uh, I get one phone call out of all the, well, why couldn't you find it? And I'm like, you weren't answering your phone. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I can't shoot an arrow and do smoke signals while I'm handling everything. And so right. the DM called and he, right in front of everybody, he's like, you did the right thing, kid. He's like, good job. Everybody's safe. That's what we want. Right. A hundred percent. He says, and I'm sorry I wasn't there to answer the phone to help you out. And I said, hey, listen, it ain't my first rodeo. Right. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, but again, you know, that goes back to alignment. Yeah. 
Now, if you, you know, when, when you look at a company and you, you start to train them, is this something that is pretty much an ongoing thing where it's good to really have like weekly meetings with people and to go over the core values, to make sure everybody is following the core values and to really, you know, set goals underneath those core values. Okay, this is what we should be doing now, you know, and let's try to focus on this and, and see where everybody's at and then have everybody maybe explain where they're at to make sure they're under that core value alignment yeah Yeah, i would agree and you know and you're going to have people in your business that all they want to do is put solution to problem solution to problem solution to problem but there's no execution and thing is is that i there's a a group that i belong to where we have somebody who's always drives me absolutely crazy wants to fix everything that he really isn't the one that has to be fixed and so what he's doing is he's adding suggestions or adding multiple layers of authority and it's just like dude if you want to have a really great environment you gotta not only trust people but you have to have people in there that are worth being trusted yeah right mm-hmm. you know it's like it, it it's so many of these issues go away in our life you know you hear people say it's like well my, i can't find a girlfriend or i can't find a boyfriend or i can't find a wife or i can't find my husband so the question is is when you look in the mirror are you worthy of being that person yeah Mm-hmm. right same right. thing it's like if you're in a team and you've got you know like some of this guy i'm thinking of who constantly makes he's like well you know this person's doing this and this person's doing that and we have to you know put more constraint here and put more constraint here and it's like you all want people that are actually engaged in doing the work are they really worthy of being in the group yeah in order to make it grow like are we being those people at the same time so Mm -hmm. yeah and that's that again that's how alignment happens that's you know to kind of bring it full circle here right is that it goes beyond trust it it goes yeah you have to set the right expectations and we've talked a lot about expectations on this show you have to set the expectations you have to be willing to course correct but you also have to be willing to hold people accountable and stop correcting just hold them accountable for it. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's great advice. Now, if we had to take today's conversation and you really want to emphasize on some important factors, what are some of the things you'd like to emphasize on? If you don't have a focus on your core values and what those actually mean, why they're in place, they don't mean anything. Right. Right. So if you're going to do this, it's, you got to be committed. Like there is, you got to burn the boats. Yeah. You got to absolutely burn the boats if you're going to do this. There is no falling back, right? Right. And Mm -hmm. if you don't have people that are willing to come on, you know, the bus is leaving, you're either on it or not. Yes. And if you have people that are not willing willing to be on your bus, then you got to find the right people who are. Yeah. And you got to make it known. So this is going to take a tremendous amount of courage. And it's going to be creepy and scary as hell at at points. Yes, you are going to wind up losing people that you don't want to lose. But again, you have to weigh, if I lose this person, what am I going to gain? What is the possibility that I'm going to gain? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. I think that's great, great advice. That's a great way of looking at it. I really do. You know, I think it's, it's more, you're looking at it more a positive sense, you know, so it doesn't bring you down and get you like, Oh, you know, you know, cause sometimes all that stress of thinking of thinking of some of the things that are going on in the company in a negative way, you know, let's turn around, think about how it could be positive. Yeah. And any time that I've worked with companies on this, you know, I've worked with several organizations about working on their culture and the things that we've put together, not only do we work on the culture itself, but then we also work on what are the goals. So so if you're going to do this, what do you want to get out of it? Exactly. Right. And so I've worked with a lot of companies that when they said, well, if we do this, then we want to be able to you know, grow and expand by 15%. We want, a, you know, an increase in annual revenue year over year, 15, 10, 20%. It's like, that's very doable, right? Yeah. So let's use that as our metric. And nine times out of 10, they make it, or they're just a little shy of it. Right? Yeah. Sometimes it's okay to be a little shy of making a goal. You're still, you're still getting feedback and still a metric. You haven't failed You've made yeah. more than you did the year before, which is what you right. wanted to do anyway, right? Exactly. So now this year we know what didn't work, so let's ring the bell next year or next quarter or whatever, right? So right. you got to have some of those things. Like if you if you want to 
shift up your company, it's got to be for specific reasons other than just making the shift. It could be just simply like <laughs> we're tired of toxic people in this business. Yeah. And toxic people are going to, they're going to build more money. But remember, you're always, you're going to have a dynamic change curve that takes place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And you have to be ready for this. Yes. But know that there's always this, right? Exactly. So, so one of the things that I do when I work with companies, we sit down and we make those goals. If you're going to do this, what are the things that you want to see coming out of it? Other than the improvements over the group dynamic. Right. I like that. Yeah. And then that's what we use to measure six, you know, progress. Yeah. You know, we acknowledge like when we work together, we'll talk to each other like maybe once every two weeks when we go through a project like this. And it's like, okay, so how have things been for the last two weeks? Well, this is happening. This is happening. I say, how are sales? How's business? How's your comps? You know, are you finding that, <laughs> you know, like, are you looking at accounting and figuring out like how many days of outstanding invoices haven't been, you know, or accounts receivable haven't been accepted yet. Like, exactly. you know, let's look at all the aspects of the business and not just the sales piece of it, because that, yes. so, you know, cash flow therefore becomes also a big deal. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. You got to stay on top of the cash flow when you are navigating change because you can get your, you can, your eye can stray from it really quick. Oh yeah, definitely. And that happens to a lot of businesses. Too. Yeah. 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 So I've always been like, monitor your cash flow always because <clears throat> when you're going through change that that one tends to like that's a runaway mustang unfortunately yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah now what are some of the services that you provide one of the biggest ones that i provide is i come in i can i, I do um i review a set i do like i call it a I call it business health check, right? <laughs> and I, it's something that I recommend prior to anybody making any changes. And so what I do is we have this and I'm able to go ahead and actually provide like some custom recommendations based off of the feedback yeah. that I received. And we actually use that as a blueprint. If somebody mm -hmm. decides to come on and work with me for the year, because it's going to take about at least at the very minimum 12 months to get yeah. really positive results and traction could be 18 months to 24 months. It just kind of depends on what you've got in front of you. Yeah. But we always use it as a blueprint and we, and then I have them retake it in a year just to mm -hmm. do a check-in. Right. Right. Okay. And then we compare the two and then we see, we're like, how does that, how does that move forward? So to say that I'm a coach or a consultant, the way I look at it is I'm, I'm in this with you. I'm, I'm yes. you're on the ride, Right. I am your ride and die through this situation. <laughs> so we spend time talking about it. We, you know, we talk about where are some of the challenges, then maybe we may implement some training. Maybe we implement some, you know, leader to leader type of coaching, right? Um, you know, we take a look at the company's organization. Like we really figure out where the opportunities are and where the risks are of this not happening. And then we also take a look at how are they communicating? Are they like, how is communication? Is it level and even, or are you all over the place? Right. Mm -hmm. Then we put, so, so it's every step of the way, it's like putting plans in place and then figuring out how to execute on those plans while at the same time, still, you know, building and growing a company's revenue. And that's really what I do. Sometimes it could be coming in and training. It could be teaching people a new skill set. but right. ultimately at the end of the day, it's like, I have the luxury of being on the outside looking in. I get to see things and not be very close to it. Right. And that I, is and that is what helps leaders move forward. Yes. 100%. Now where can people find you? Well, the easiest thing to do, I have two two ways that people can find me. The easiest thing to do is that um if you are like if you've listened to this series for a while, I've been on here once a month now for a couple of months, which is pretty fantastic. And thank you for that. Um, I do teach people how to deal with difficult people and they can go to my website, yobrenda.com. They can get my free impact scripts that gets you into my ecosphere, right? Yeah. So if you want to learn a little bit more about me and what I'm able to do, you can also go into brendaneckbottle.com, which is a way harder <laughs> URL to remember. Brenda Neckbottle, my name is spelled right here, N-E-C-K-V-A-T-A-L.com. And then you can actually kind of look at a little bit more about some of the things that I've been involved in 
um, gives you a chance again to get into the ecosphere as well. So there's two, what are two ways that you can actually connect with me? I like that. Now you've written some books. Can you tell us about some book, the books you've written and, and where to find them? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the most recent book I wrote, I wrote with a friend of mine who's a retired Navy SEAL. Um, it's called Mission Ready, Building High-Performing Teams from the Battlefield to the Boardroom. And I wrote that with uh, William Branham. And if you ever want to learn more about the Mission Ready program and what we and what we do over there, because we do, com combined between the two of us, we do this as well. Um, that's missionreadyleadership.com. That's an easy book. You can find the book over on Amazon. I've also written another book called Two Wolves. And that really is a book for leaders on how to show up for your team. So it's all, it's a 100% mindset book. So it talks about um, the uniqueness. So the black wolf is, is the, we're the only continent. North America is the only continent where you will find a black wolf. It's a, it's a DNA anomaly in the coloring structure of the, the fur, right? So I look at the black wolf as being extremely rare, whereas your, your gray wolves are, you know, the most common. And yeah. so, um, if you are if you are of the rarity, you have a black wolf mindset. You have a very rare mindset. Right? In other words, it's like you can actually lift yourself up over, and that is also a really an amazing guide to um, to take that on. I do have a book specifically just for HR people. I I told my story about how I how I climbed ranks in the world, and that is best practices in human resources. It is the pinkest book you will ever ever read in your life. I had another friend of mine who's a seal. He says, I, he said, I want to read your book. He said, but I'm not taking that thing on the plane. And I'm like, okay, oh <laughs> <laughs> like, <it's> fine. <laughs> read it on the beach. <laughs> you know, it was really funny. And then I have some other small ones. I've contributed a couple of them, but yeah, I, I've, I've been around for a little while in the book, in the book realm. And, um, I'm actually helping two other seals write their books right now as well. But so, oh, that's cool. yeah. I so that's it. how you do it. You can find all of them on Amazon.com. I love it. I think that's awesome. You know, this has been great. I'm so glad you talked about core values today because I think it's so important. It's really necessary and people sometimes overlook it. You know, they just, you know, they, like you said, they kind of post it on their website and they don't really explain it and they don't really, you know, go over it or teach it and in, 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 the, in their business. And it really is definitely something that people have to pay more attention to and really think about really educating their, their employees so they could all you know work together as a team and really function at full capacity so yeah. i thank you so much for coming on the show today oh, this thank is you. Awesome. thank you thank I really you i appreciate it. it yeah well you have a great day and i look forward to our next conversation because you come up with such great topics that are so important in the business industry that people tend to overlook so this has been a great one i really appreciate you oh, well thank you i appreciate you too you have a great day thanks you do the same <laughs>